I want to talk about five ways Starship could change Earth forever in the next 10 years. But before we get into that, I know you guys are dying to know when the next launch will be. So we have a little bit of information that might give us a hint. Elon, where my rocket ship? I didn't think that we would get a Starship timeline update due to Kanye West posting Elon with my rocket ship, it's time to go home. Apparently has a new song where he actually says that lyric, Elon, where my rocket ship. And Elon replied saying that starships are meant to fly. We'll probably see that starship launch sometime in the next three weeks. But he says Kanye should wait for a few more future launches before he hops on board. Elon also tagged Nicki Minaj. Many of you guys may have been wondering why this is. Nicki Minaj has a song called Starship where she sings, Starships were meant to fly. And this song came out actually way before the Starship program debuted. So interesting coincidence. However, I recently did a panel talking about Starship, the many use cases, and also the fact that SpaceX needs to ace this launch. Yeah, they'll have to meet all of those mission objectives, and this is why it's so important. So yeah, maybe somewhere around March 4th we're looking at, which means that my zero-G flight should not conflict with the Starship launch, hopefully. I was so glad I was on the cusp, and I may still post this. I was on the cusp of responding to Kanye and Elon and saying, hey, don't listen to Elon. He's overreacting, Kanye. Go ahead and jump on that rocket. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be perfectly safe. <laughs> you don't happen to have an ulterior motive, do you? <laughs> oh, no. I'm assuming that this is reasonably accurate as far as the next uh, uh, launch. It doesn't surprise me. Um, I know a lot of people have been thinking it's going to be mid-February or it's imminent, but uh, there are a lot of indications that there's still work to be done, not just on the Starship itself, but the uh, Stage Zero itself and you know, I happen to know there, there's there's some construction that's going on on the orbital location, the pad, not on the pad, but very close to that, that uh, is still ongoing. And there's a pretty large concrete pour that is about to happen. And it's going to take probably a good week for that to be done. And then all of the scaffolding removed. So uh, no way that at least for the next week or two to be able to do if they wanted to do a static fire or or anything that approaches launching. They might be able to do some cryo tests and all that, but uh, but yeah, three weeks sounds more reasonable to me than imminently. Right. Elon time, I'm sorry. I just, I can't believe anything other than that. Yeah. yeah. So do you guys agree that three weeks, are you guys all on board with that? Minimum. Three yeah. weeks plus. It yeah. sounds reasonable. I mean, there's also, there's talk about what happened to ship 28 with removing engines and what they were doing in the engine compartment. And people are sort of adding together the discussion that uh, Elon had at the uh, SpaceX all hands, where he said that had the ship had a payload, then it, it wouldn't have had to have dumped the locks, but because they dumped the locks, it caused the explosion. So a lot of people are thinking, well, that may be highlighting a, another issue that hasn't been you know talked about. And that is, why did that happen? And was there something wrong with maybe shielding or connections or maybe a fire suppression system that was or was not there? So they may have been doing those mods on Ship 28, and that needed to be done before they could give the final stuff to the uh, FAA so that the FAA could then say, okay, we feel confident enough to give you a launch license. So, so I still think that there's that kind of work that's going on that uh, is going to take another several weeks. So again, three weeks sounds about right to me. And what are your predictions for, are we going to, is Starship going to make it to Hawaii? If you assume that Artemis 3 is September 2026 and working our way back, they absolutely must get all of their uh, milestones on this flight. The booster needs to separate, it needs to come back, it needs to get into the Gulf, and it needs to be in a controlled way. And the ship needs to get all the way over to Hawaii and at least try to re-enter, but it needs it. They really need to hit all of those. This isn't IFT one where we're hoping it won't blow up the pad. It's not IFT two that wow that was cool. We're at a point where they really need to hit major milestones. So that's my opinion. Well, it's not just hitting major milestones. It's not having RUDs 
that require an extended investigation that slow down the launch trade. SpaceX needs to be launching uh, like once a month in order yeah. to get to the uh, requirement for landing on the moon. And it needs to hit that launch rate real damned fast. Yes. I mean, starting with IFT3, realistically, in order to meet it, to meet the delayed schedule that NASA's put out. You know, if, you know this is isn't like a Falcon rocket, all right? You have got, you're dealing with something that is so friggin' huge that you're talking kiloton scale explosions if something goes wrong. Yeah. You know, kiloton. We're talking low, low end nuke yield here. You've got to do everything right. And SpaceX has been rather gun hole about safety because they were dealing with lower levels of energy. Well, now that you're dealing with potential energy that creates big smoking holes in the ground where people <laughs> might live, you've got to do it right. And you've got to do it right the first time. That's mm -hmm. going to require a cultural change for SpaceX that we haven't seen yet. So, yeah, I, I agree with everything what, what you guys are saying. Um, and uh, I'm sure you guys know about the bets that I've placed in the past. And, of course, they would think, hey, hey, you know, now that Vulcan made its flight successfully and everything, now I don't care what happens with Starship. But, of course, I have another bet out there now for those of I'm, some of you may be aware of it. I bet that there is no way we are going to see Artemis 3 happen in the third quarter of 2026, given all of the hurdles that still need to be jumped is absolutely impossible and i met, made the same bet that if they do actually manage to do that i'll be tattooing spacex fanboy on my butt but <laughs> okay. in any of that, aside from that, i hope that you, you know, don't have a video showing that <laughs> please <laughs> yes, there are, there are people are going to want to if that's the problem um, in in any event you know i i definitely want to see this go off perfectly i want to see starship make that splashdown it's unfortunate because it hasn't even entered into that suborbital trajectory yet i mean yeah. it got past the carmen line and that was the end of it um yeah. so it's got a ways to go before it's going to complete the other end of that mission by the way that's going to be exciting for the people in hawaii yeah. where it actually does that re-entry is going to be a cool thing to see especially since it'll probably be happening at night um yeah that'll be awesome that, yeah. that is going to be one big re-entry flare oh my well now yeah. you can fly on hawaiian airlines use starlink and then watch the, right end. the yes yeah um <laughs> now uh, uh, i agree with you jordan the, the the timeline if artemis 3 you know you could we can argue whether that's realistic or not, but uh, I did a Gantt chart that I was talking with Ellie about, and I kind of worked my way back. And it is impressive the number of things that they need to achieve between now and then. And it all assumes everything goes perfectly right, and there are no big delays. I know, but but it's it's quite impressive when you, you you look at okay, here's the things that you have to get done in this amount of time. Uh, it would not surprise me if uh, we see Artemis 3 being delayed. Uh, and, yeah. and, you know, Starship is part of it, but there's also spacesuits that are a part of that, too, yes. that uh, need to be developed. And uh, that's that's not a guarantee yet at this point either. Fortunately, the Collins Aerospace um, uh, spacesuit performed well during it during this test that it just carried out. It, it, it cool. uh, passed with flying colors, from what I understand. We also talk in the video about some of the use cases for Starship. So here are five use cases for Starship. Some of them you may not have thought about. Of course, we know that Starship will be the reusable rocket that Elon wants us to use to get to Mars, to establish a colony and a permanent presence on Mars, a civilization, in fact. We also know that Starship will be used for our return to the moon with the human landing system. And early on when SpaceX debuted the Starship concept, Concept, they talked about point to point travel. So basically being able to use a rocket to travel much faster anywhere around the globe than on a commercial airplane. We also know that the DOD is in conversation with SpaceX about potential future military uses for Starship. 
And finally, one that you may not have thought about is the idea of using Starship for solar power. Starship, in my opinion, is one of the most important applications it could ever carry out is space-based solar power to get Absolutely. Elon Musk, maybe, or Jeff Bezos or whatever, into the, into the utility business. It has the potential to create a, a um, solar power stations that can beam their energy to any point on the planet as long as you have a rectenna in place to do that, meaning that people, we could have a choice of power companies. You wouldn't just have one utility company that you have to go to, that you have to pay your bill to. There would be competition in the, uh, in the utility arena. And more importantly, that whole initiative could really transform the future of the planet. It, there's a lot of interest in trying to do some, regardless of whether you believe in climate change or not. That's not the point. Most governments on the planet are, are trying to do something about that now through renewable energy. Solar Space solar is the ultimate in green energy because it generates so much more power per square foot than solar panels do here on Earth. Also, the sun is always shining in space. It isn't here on Earth, obviously. The wind doesn't always blow here on Earth. But more importantly, you have the, the potential of building these things by making use of raw materials that you don't have to get from Earth. You can harvest raw materials from asteroids and the moon, thus eliminating all of the damaging activities that earthbound mining does in order to build these power stations in the first place. If you can set up an industry like that, first of all, there's so much money in it. My God, there's a lot of money in it. But in it pass into Earth's shadow, um, all of that makes Starship the, the keystone of this solution of providing um, you know, the, this alternative utility solution to the planet. So it sounds like a Starship launch in about three weeks is a reasonable guess. I plan to be down there for the launch and I hope to see some of you guys down there. And I just wanna say thank you so much for supporting my channel, Ellie in Space. It has been such a crazy ride and actually I am coming up on the third anniversary of the channel. I consider that being when the channel was officially monetized and I had just started to pump out a lot of Starlink related content, making the Alien Space channel that you guys know today. So thank you so much for supporting my channel. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to Alien Space if you aren't already and I'll see you in the next video.